How's it going, everybody? Dieter Kurtenbach here with Logan Murdoch. Warriors lose to the Houston Rockets 118 to 112 on Saturday night, prime time. James Harden didn't show up, and neither did the Golden State Warriors, at Ooh. least for the first quarter. James Harden never showed up. He's too busy working on his referee trolling. Um, let's talk about this game. Logan, three things off of this one. Number one, might be bigger than one game loss. Draymond Green injures his foot in the fourth quarter, ankle, foot, something. Steps on Boogie Cousins' foot. It didn't look that serious, and then he's on the floor writhing in pain in front of Steve Kerr. He said after the game he doesn't expect to miss too much time, but if Draymond's out, that is very bad news for the Golden State Warriors. It is very bad news for the Golden State Warriors, specifically on defense, specifically when Boogie Cousins is trying to get himself oh, back. Oh, don't worry. We're going to talk about that. And it's it's – he is the heart and soul of not only the team but the defensive effort. He yeah. covers a lot of people's mistakes, as you have chronicled on Twitter. He a covers lot. a lot of mistakes, but from you know what I've seen and heard from people, they don't think that it's that serious, apparently. Yeah. It looked really, really serious to start, but if it's a sprained ankle, maybe a week, maybe not. We'll see. But it, it has been heart – it has been – messed up for Draymond this season with injuries. He has not yeah. – he has had to play through them when he has been healthy. He's been all NBA defense. For sure. But when he hasn't, it, it, this team is, has, has struggled. So it'll be a rough stretch however long he's out, but, you know, we'll see what happens. It's interesting he changes agents today in effort to get this big new contract. And then the one thing that will probably prevent him or could prevent him from getting this massive contract extension this summer is injuries. And sure enough, it didn't look like he even twisted the ankle. The ankle, It just came straight down, and maybe it was a quick turn. But on the replay, you couldn't really see it. It's from, not my ankle. I don't want to tell what hurts. The, from the, apparently, that wasn't the thing that hurt him. It was something in the first quarter that he what sprained hurt it. What And, um, I mean, that's what, yeah. he, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. It wasn't a great game for Draymond in general anyway, but uh, certainly certainly bad news if he does miss it. Let's talk about Boogie Cousins. This is the second big thing. And frankly, it's probably the big, 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 big thing when it comes to this team. Thank you. Um, he was real bad, real bad on Saturday, and that was without James Harden. So Friday I write about how James Harden is basically going to put DeMarcus Cousins on a platter, and we're going to find out if he can play defense one way or another. Uh, James Harden didn't play, and DeMarcus Cousins was still exposed in a lot of different ways. Teams are just targeting him ruthlessly in pick-and-roll defense. To Boogie's credit, he sat there in, in the locker room and owned it, was very thoughtful, really insightful. He's turning into the best quote on the team. Uh, the other side of it is he was minus 17, and uh, that's really quite bad. That's You look at it, that's the difference in the ballgame. Boogie was straight-up unplayable against this Rockets team, and everyone's going to see this tape. And they're going to go, we should just do what the Rockets did and run high pick and roll the entire time. I know that the guy is coming back from a year off. I, I want to be sympathetic to that. I understand that he was never good at pick and roll defense to begin with, and I want to be sympathetic to that. I, but, man, this is rough. I think that you should just go back into your column, take out James Harden, and put in Chris Paul because that's yeah. exactly what it was exactly. with this at this game. And it was it was something that they attacked early on. Remember, he was the one that started and the, in the unit that went down 15-0 to, to start the game. And so it, this is something that he – he acknowledges and that we're all going to see. They're going to target him every single time on the pick and roll, no matter what it is. That's the, he's Painful. and it's it, they, they the Warriors have tried to do different things, you know, sag him back a little bit. But when they sag, I think that's him, more him to be fair. And it, you can get away with that when you have Draymond on the floor. Things are about to get really weird because I highly doubt Draymond plays on Monday yeah. against Charlotte. That'd be weird if he does. Uh, but the thing and is, if you don't have if you don't have compensation there, that, that's a big problem. Yeah, and the thing is, when he sa when he does sag his decision or not, that leads to open three pointers from PJ Tucker yes. and and, up, and and pick and roll three pointers from the, the guy that it's are that picking. secondary pass. Exactly. So I think that that's something that we're they're really going to have to look at. And they and the Rockets, as they do against this team, they laid the blueprint of how you play against this Warriors team. But he's on the floor. Interesting enough, though, Kevon Looney played a lot in the Western Conference Finals when James Harden did play. James Harden doesn't play tonight. James Harden, obviously, a much different body type, a unique body type, if you will, compared to Chris Paul. They basically ran the same James Harden offense with Chris Paul, the Houston Rockets did, on Saturday night, and that meant Jordan Bell got major run. Dude played 17 minutes tonight, which I think is all he's gotten in the last, I don't know, 17 weeks, it feels like, total. Uh, and I thought he was actually damn good. He was a plus two in the game. Uh, he's mobile. He was making things happen. I thought he was disciplined, which has obviously always been the big issue with Jordan Bell. If Draymond's out, he fills in at the power forward spot. That, that's kind of a given. But, man, I, I think that we might have seen Jordan Bell now starting to get himself back into this rotation because the – 
we got 24 games left, 23 games left now. If Boogie's unplayable in pick-and-roll defense, you have to have somebody. And Kevon Looney isn't exactly the most mobile guy. He works against James Harden. They don't have another center other than Jordan Bell, and at least Jordan Bell's super mobile. They're going to have to get him some practice at this because he might be playing a lot in the playoffs. And we also, you know, we don't know when Draymond is coming back. We also, with, with Jordan Bell, the fact is he is playing tonight. He played exactly how he played last year. Absolutely. When they, when he did get major minutes. Yeah. And that was a big thing, getting back to um, what got you successful. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've also chronicled this all the way, you know, his yeah. ups and downs in playing. Uh, and to his credit, he's played well in the Spurs. He has, you know, gotten in. Um, Last couple times he's been out there, we've said to ourselves he should get more run. Yeah, He got that more run tonight, and he, he made the most of it. We'll see if that means anything because it's not our call. But the yeah. biggest thing with him is to make sure he is disciplined on the floor. We saw the first, his first second when he was in, he it was the pump yes. fake from Chris yes. Paul. Yes, big play. He, he did not. He bit on it, but he he, <laughs> he, he stayed got, back. He stayed back. Yeah. And that was something that they need to do. They need his defense. If he plays really well, that's something that can be an asset for him. The pro, the thing that I am most curious with is how good is he going to play when Draymond Green is not on the floor. Hmm. When Gray, Draymond Green is not there to you know throw you know alley oops and things like that. that we, could, we could argue that he wasn't as good after Draymond went out with the injury, and they left him in and did not close with Demarcus Cousins because again Cousins was unplayable. So that is an interesting thought going forward. That said, he might not be playing the five. Yeah. for the next couple of days, weeks. He, he'd probably be at the four most of the time, and he's done that earlier this season. Warriors obviously struggled, but I thought he did okay in certain spurts. He has to, he has to kill it yeah. over the next couple of games. This is probably his last great audition before the playoffs start. If he wants to be part of the playoff rotation, he needs to do it now. Otherwise, the Warriors probably need to go out and buy themselves a center on the buyout market. Third thing, I just want to touch on this real fast before we get out of here. There was a weird mood around the team after this loss. This team is still exceptionally good. They're 42-17. and 17. Yes, they lost to the Rockets. That's a rival team. They've now lost, I think, three straight games to them. No one's happy about that. But apparently they practiced. We didn't have media availability yesterday, but they practiced yesterday. And apparently the practice went poorly. And then they come out and they go down 15 nothing in the first quarter because this team really does not like 5.30 Sunday games, Saturday games. Like, they, they hate them. They cannot stand these 5.30 starts. Uh, I don't think they're admitting that, but something's up with the body clock. Yeah, and then everyone was just kind of in a, a, a crummy legs. mood. Yeah. Maybe it's because they have to go back to Charlotte. No offense, but maybe that's maybe that, you know, long this, bro. You better, be, you better be cool. Anyway, but I do think that there is a, there is a, a weird, eerie vibe. We'll see what happens if they – how they play down the stretch – what do you think it's about? I, I don't – I can't really put my finger on it right now, but I just think that it's just – it's it's the same kind of vibe. It feels like the same kind of vibes as last year down the stretch. I yep. don't know okay. how that's going to work down the stretch going forward, but it is a little eerie how, how they're playing right now. I, mean, I, think, I, think I think there's a frustration with Cousins not being all the way back. Hmm. And they're not blaming him. I think everyone on the team is very positive towards him, as they should be. He's been – a pro uh, again he's going to earn himself money he had to win it both on and off the court off the court he's killing it on the court he's killing the warriors in some senses and i think there's a frustration there on they can't get to their top level until he does and he's clearly not even close and again you can't hold it against the guy but man it's it's really rough to watch and he torpedoed the team tonight and it's not out of a lack of effort it's just his body isn't there yet, and they have to give him reps because you only have so many more of these games to get him up to playoff speed, if he can even get there. And we just have no idea. So I think that there's a little bit of that in the back of the head where it's like time, time's ticking. We, we say 23 games is a long time. It's eight weeks. But, man, he's got a long way to go, and this team still has to get to its optimal level. They can't turn it on 100% on the defensive end until they see what Boogie Cousins 100% is. Because if he, that 100% isn't is something like this, they got to recalibrate. they got to do something else because, again, this is just unplayable in the modern NBA. Sucks, but that's the way it goes. Warriors are going to go on a big, long, week-long road trip. What is it? Charlotte, Miami, Orlando, Orlando. and then Philly. That should be fun. That's going to be a good one. I'll be talking to you after all those games from my house. You'll hear from Logan.